Wait, I haven't done that. <laughs> I haven't even turned on the audio yet. Today we're gonna make a little chili pepper uh, pot handle uh, cover, and this is an old one. It's a prototype. It's right out of my kitchen, and it fits, um, you know, a longer handle. This fits um, a skillet, like a cast iron skillet. And this is an item that I designed at least a decade ago um, because. I didn't really like the way that the handle covers looked when they were bound on the edges. They looked so clunky. And we could bind the outside of this type of thing like this, like I do um, inside my quilted cosmetic bags. But I didn't want that look. And so I wanted something that would be unique um, for my customers. And this is what I came up with. I was already doing a little apple mitt and um, I'll show a picture of that along with the leaf that I was doing and so this was a nice item to go along I don't actually know which came first but anyway this is the pattern that I've been using for years I like to make these out of freezer paper because you can iron it onto your fabric if you need to and uh, it'll pull off and you can reuse it over and over and it doesn't rip the way paper does so that's a nice thing to do there are two ways to do it. One is you can, um, I will get this pattern somewhere where you can get it, either in the section below this video or on my website. But you can see that it measures a little bit wider than six inches. And for the smaller size, when it's folded in half, it's a little bit longer than seven inches, which once you open it up is a little longer than 14. For that other size you'd need to go more like to the 9 inch folded. And the two ways to do it are the wasteful way where you're putting the uh, red fabric inside and outside and the way that I usually do them especially if I'm using a nice red batik which this isn't um, where I do muslin on one side and that's just seamed together and then pressed um, with the uh, red a little further on the inside so that it's not going to show on this edge when you're finished. Okay, so we're going to take this and what we do is cut out the batting. We've got one layer of cotton batting and one layer of Insulbrite, which they're both made by Warm and Natural and I've been very happy with them over the years. I haven't tried a lot of battings. I'm sure there are other really great battings you can find at your local fabric store. And we just want to cut this out. I wish I could show you one of those really beautiful sewing rooms women have, but I've just um, sort of built mine out of mismatched tables and whatever supplies, things like this. I put my money into things like this, scissors that are easy on the hands rather than um, ever felt that I could have beautiful drawers for all my fabrics. Okay, so we're gonna put these in here and I don't think it really matters which side goes out, but um, you never want people to put this in the oven although they could slip it onto this to pull this out of the oven if they're finishing something inside the oven in a pot and they can put this onto their skillet to move it around or off the stove. These would make great Christmas gifts if you felt like um, making them for people. I do tend to, I already pressed this so I'm not going to do it right now, but I do tend to take this to the iron and really blast it with some steam so that this is kind of a nice edge for you and doesn't move around a lot. Again, So I'm going to put my darning foot on my machine. And one of the things I do is I don't like to use my fingers anymore to loosen that up or to tighten it. I like to use half of a clothespin because it really can save uh, 
your finger joints and then you can get it on there nice and tight because you don't want your foot ever popping off on you. I did have it happen once. Okay, so this is the thing I said I would show on the uh, little test tutorial or thing we did. Um, you pull your thread up like that. You, you poke it through, you pull it out, and then you've got enough thread that you can use as a little handle so that you don't have to try to get right in there to hold things. You can kind of pull on it. So I'm just going to get started so that I'm attached. And then I'm just going to do any kind of a little decorative thing, whatever. Whatever you want to do. I usually do some leaves and stuff, but I've gotten tired of those, so I did this, and I have started doing this recently. I like to do the contrasting thread. That looks nice. If you don't have um, any free motion experience and you don't want to do something like that yet, just sew one or three or five lines across there with contrasting thread or even matching if uh, you're not that confident in your stitches right now, and uh, then you'll be good to go. Now we're going to make this little leaf, and to do it we're going to find a scrap of fabric that we like, and um, we're going to... I just free, I just sew these, but I thought maybe a spoon would work, and so I'm going to see if I can use this spoon to try to draw my leaf. And basically, this needs to be, this again, I can try to provide you with a pattern. You're going to need to turn this, and so really, it can't be too small. about like that. I don't want to get too narrow here. I'll probably sew this a touch different than what I've shown there. So I've traced this the best I can. This is about the size and shape that I would do. You don't want to make them too big but you don't want to make them too small. And so we're just gonna, we want a small stitch. do one stitch. Maybe I'll do two. I've got even smaller than I usually use. So. And we're going to come back around. We're going to trim this close. You don't want to get too close or it's not going to hold up for you. And we're going to cut around this. My tension isn't perfect right now, but it's not super baggy on one side which is where we would worry that it's actually an incompetent stitch. If you've never used a little tool like this to turn these types of things, uh, go straight to your sewing store and get one of these little setups with different size tools and different things um, for uh, poking through because this is the way you do it. And it's just so much nicer than messing with these things. Um, I like to do this. I like to, if you can see this, I like to really push my little metal rod in there and try to get that really turned out. And then after I do that, I go straight to my iron and blast it with the hot cotton setting. If your machine does not have a little edge foot of some sort, I'm really only familiar with the brand that I use. I've had two of these machines. Um, one was a quilter with a motherboard and this one is all mechanical. But if you don't have some kind of an edge or foot, uh, make sure you think about it if you're going to upgrade your machine because this will make your sewing uh, so much more beautiful and professional looking. So what we want to do is stitch around the outside of this and it doesn't have to be perfect but we want it to look pretty good and there we have our little leaf now when I wanted to do this and I wanted to put a loop on this thing uh, just a little one. I'm not even sure anybody even really hangs it except for maybe on a little cup hook. But I wanted some kind of a little loop and there was the question of how to do it and have it be finished off and this is what I came up with. 
So when you sew this, you're going to put it like this and you're going to have this hanging out and it's going to hang out this far and then wrap over and, and go on the inside and so you want to kind of judge whether you're going to like the way that looks. And so I'm going to like the way that looks and so this is how I'm going to do this. So. I'm going to try to sew this around a 5 8 seam allowance, which is standard. I don't want my chili to be, pepper to be too big or too small. I'll center my needle. Good idea to go back and really get this good at the top. And then we're going to come down. be very careful not to cut our leaf off. I've done it and it's really a bummer. We're going to trim around here and we don't need to get super close. Most likely nobody will ever see inside there unless they're deconstructing your piece to get an idea of how they can put it together. This is the part that is the hardest and you might be able to make some kind of little jig to do this. I've gotten pretty good at using my fingers, but again, that's why I don't uh, really love making these that much. Um, a chopstick works good, but eventually you'll break it. Now, this is on the outside, and this is on the inside, and I usually take my pinking shears and just cut this. If you don't have those, just don't cut it too straight so that it's not, you know, gonna fray on you too much. Usually when I make these I make a whole bunch at once. It's sort of funny for me to do it uh, one at a time because you have to change your thread constantly. <laughs> so what I do when I sew this in here is I like to catch a big part of this first and then I like to come up about here. So I'm going to sew this on, um, you know, good and tight. And then after I've done that, uh, I'm going to tack it down here. I'm going to pinch it like that, tack it right here, and then flip this back. Okay, so here we have it, and this is what it looks like and it makes a cute little gift and um, there it is. I will add a list of supplies and materials uh, to the video and uh, if you liked what you saw today please let your friends know. I'm uh, hoping to keep going with this and um, it'd be nice to have some people watching. Thanks. Do you